Kieran here from KJH Woodworking and welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, thank you for joining us. This channel is basically about building, creating and learning together um, in relation to woodworking, epoxy and DIY projects. So if you're interested in that sort of stuff, hit the subscribe button and bell notification so you can keep up to date with all of the content. Now, in today's video, we are going through how to make a cross-cut sled. So everything from making, cutting the parts through to squaring up the fence, the runners, making a stop block. So if you wanna see how we do that, stick around. Let's throw some safety gear on and get cutting. So first thing I do, like anything, is cut all my pieces. Just makes everything go so much smoother when you assemble. Okay, now we've got all our parts cut, we can glue up our fences. So you'll notice that one of the um, fences, or well, fence components is about 10 mil lower than the others. Um, that will actually house a T-track, which will act, or will allow us to integrate a stop block into the setup. So we'll go ahead and glue those up. So what you wanna use is a dead flat surface. So fortunately, I've got this bench back here that I know is 100% flat. So I'm gonna go and do that, so I'll apply glue, Sit it on the fence. Uh, sorry, sit it on the bench, and then um, clamp it together and let it dry. What I am going to do, and I saw this, uh, I think it was Tamar from Three by Three Custom. Um, she actually clamps a straight edge to it, and then you know it's going to be dead straight once the glue goes off. So we're going to jump over there and get stuck into it. Glue cleanup sucks, so just make sure you uh, give all a quick wipe off before it goes off. Uh, it just makes everything so much easier um, when you go to flatten everything. Okay, so while that is drying, you want to install your runners on the bottom of your sled. So to do that, you want to take off your blade guard and drop your blade down as low as possible. Now you've got a couple of options for draw, uh, sorry, for mitre um, runners. So you can either use a hardwood and cut it, cut it out, rip it to size. You can buy custom um, designed runners that actually have like a grub screw that allows you to do just the, um, the tightness. But I actually like to use T-Track. So T-Track fits in here quite nicely. Um, and because it's got two runners, even if there's a little bit of slop, you can actually use some masking tape as sort of a spacer, which then pulls that to either side. So I'll bring the camera in closer and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so this is your standard T-Track. Fits in there, there's a little bit of slop in there. So I'll zoom that bad boy in. And you can see that wobble. So what I go on ahead and do is put two um, runs of just uh, painter's tape. And then what that will do, it will take that slop out, see how that one runs in nicely, no wobble. Where this one here, oops, runs in nicely, but you've got that wobble. So I'll go ahead and do that to both of them, and then we can fix them on. It is incredibly important that you put the masking tape on the inside edges or the outside edges. Don't do them one on the outside edge and then one on the inside edge, otherwise the tape won't push the runners out opposing each other so both on the inside or both on the outside no exceptions so you got your t-track all cut to length and drilled out with holes make sure you got a hole at each edge um, just for extra support tapes on there to make sure there's uh, no slack so we've got that in place now we want to set the um, sled in place i never make my saw cut in the center of the sled Basically that limits the use of your sled. So if you've got it um, dead center, you're gonna have 400 either side. Whereas you're offset, so I'm doing 530 on one side, gives me about 270 on the other side. So um, just makes the usability of it far, far more superior. So the way I do that is set my fence, then I can sit this in place, uh, which references off the fence. 
Now to actually attach um, the base to the runners, I do the same thing I do with draw slides. So all I'm gonna do is slide this out, poke the uh, T-track through it until I see my first hole, screw that in, slide it out a little bit further, screw it in. So you wanna just put your first screw in right on the edge. I find using a Vix bit or a self-centering drill bit makes this so much easier. Make sure your screws aren't gonna pop through the top of your sled as well. So once you're about halfway through, you can take that off, flip it over, put the rest of your screws in. Now you can move your fence out of your way, pull your tape off and test the slide. I feel it took me longer to pull that off than it did to make the base. It's a devastating moment when you realise your microphone went flat halfway through a video. So now we're doing voiceovers for the rest. Time to get stuck into the fences. So first thing we're going to do is just clean it up with a sander and then we are going to attach the rear fence after that. The rear fence doesn't need to be overly square, so all we are going to do is line it up with the back of the sled, clamp it in place, then countersink some screws. Key is to countersink your screws, otherwise they're A, going to scratch up your table saw or interfere with the jig from actually running properly. So you want to countersink them and then just hit them with a quick sand just to get any burrs off. It just makes everything run so much smoother long term. Now we want to get cracking on the front fence, so we're going to put a T-track in the top uh, to allow for a stop block to be integrated in. So we need to rip it down just to make the space for the actual T-track. So we're going to go ahead and cut that slot a little bit bigger, just using the table saw, and then we will screw that in place. Now it's time to make our first cut. We are going to slowly raise the blade up with the sled in position while the saw is on and make that initial cut. Um, but we're not gonna cut all the way through yet. We just wanna effectively score a line for us to square off to get the front fence roughly in the right position. So we wanna put a screw in the far right hand side which is our pivot screw, then one screw in the far left which is the screw that we move as we square everything up. Okay, now it's time to get this as square as square can be. Um, and to do that, we're gonna use what we call the five cut method. Now, it can be quite intimidating, but it's pretty straightforward. It's just some basic maths and we'll go through it step by step. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a cut of, um, off the edge of a scrap bit of board. And it, all it needs to be is a slither off as long as you're taking a full pass. Then we're gonna rotate that so that the freshly cut edge is on the fence. We're gonna make another cut. We're gonna do the same thing until we get back around to our original cut. We're gonna take 20 mil off and then what that will do is amplify the error. So we can then take our measurement of A and B and that will get us our error um, of outer square. And then we can work that back to error per millimeter which then allows us to move our fence to suit to get it um, as square as we can. But we'll go through that. I wrote out the whole formula and realized you can't actually see it on camera. So I will put that on the screen, um, but I'll bring the camera over and we'll go through it step by step. So you wanna make your first cut, rotate your board so the fresh cut is on the fence. Do that three more times. And then you wanna take your 20 mil pass off take your measurements. Okay, now we're gonna throw some numbers at you and we can do some basic maths. So what you wanna do is take the width of A, so the A side, which is, in my case, is 17.69, minus B, which is 18.57. That gives us 0.88, sorry, minus 0.88 millimeters. 
then we are gonna divide that by four because we did four cuts as we went around to amplify. So that gives us, over the length of this, we are out by minus 0.22 millimeters. So then we're gonna divide that by the length of our offcut times the distance between the edge of our fence and that pivot screw. So that pivot screw will not move at all during this process. It's just gonna be that screw we marked as number one. So once we do that equation there, we're out by minus 0.714 millimeters, which is pretty good. So over that length, we're, we're less than a millimeter, but we wanna get more accurate. So let's, let's see how we do that. Okay, to square this up, what you're gonna need is a couple of clamps, a set of feeler gauges, and a block of timber that is cut on a 45. So I'm gonna bring you in close and I'll show you what you do in this corner, but it's pretty straightforward. So what you need to consider is what um, your number was. Was it a positive or was it negative? So mine was a negative number, so I need to move my fence away from me. If it was a positive number, you need to move the fence towards yourself. My bad, that was completely the wrong way around. Um, if it is a negative number, you need to move your fence towards yourself. A positive number, move the fence away from yourself. Don't make the same mistake I did. It's very frustrating while you try to square things up if you go the wrong way. Um, to do that, what you do is you butt your corner in. So if you're moving it towards you, you butt it in hard, clamp it down, unscrew your fence, slide your feeler gauge in, and you set your feeler gauge, which is basically a, a whole heap of thin shims. Um, you set that to whatever your error per the length of the fence was. So in my case, it's 71, or, sorry, 0.71 millimeters. Um, so if it was positive, I'd then slide that in, adjust my fence. You don't want to use that original screw hole, drill another hole. Um, but in my case, it is a um, negative number, so I'm moving away from myself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide in my feeler gauge first, clamp down my timber. So, so we'll slide in my feeler gauge, we'll clamp down the timber, then we'll take the feeler gauge out and pull the fence into the point of the timber. And you guessed it, we are gonna label that screw hole so we don't reuse it by mistake. What I like to do, repeat that whole process all over again, see how we did. So oh, I will label this one now one slash five and rinse and repeat and see how close we got. So full transparency, because we don't hide from our mistakes, uh, I buggered that up and I had to redo that whole process of re-squaring the fence up because I went the wrong way. So just make sure you're going the correct way. So if you've got a negative number, move the fence towards yourself. Positive number, move your fence away from yourself. Uh, or do it like I did it and do it three or four times before you realize your mistake and go, hey, it's, uh, it's much quicker if you go the right way in the first place. So once we completed that again, uh, we checked our numbers, we came out with an error. Now, so this is the error over a full meter was less than 0.15 millimeters. Pretty happy with that. So I'm gonna stick with that. So once you're done there, go ahead and countersink and screw off your front fence. Just remember not to use any of the holes that you used when you were moving your fence. Otherwise, it's gonna move your fence out of that alignment. So just go through and drill all new holes, bang in a whole heap of new screws. Make sure you don't screw anywhere near the blade. Um, you don't wanna be damaging your saw blade by going through a screw. And then you are ready for a coat of finish. I like to use a homemade paste wax or beeswax um, on this because I just find the paste wax uh, allows it to slide even smoother than it is already. But you can use whatever finish you like. You don't even really need to finish it. I just like to finish things to protect them and keep them lasting for a long time as well as it allows it to slide quite slickly. 
time to whip up a quick stop block out of a couple of pieces of ply and a hardwood runner. So we just want to cut them to size, then cut a dado through the center of the top piece and glue in a hardwood runner that fits tightly in the T-track. Once that's all dry, we're going to drill out a hole for the bolt um, that suits the T-track in the center of the stop block. Once we've got that hole, we'll thread the bolt through and then we're just going to need to check out a little bit more of that runner to match the T-bolt so it all recesses in nicely. So we're just going to do that nice and uh, easily with a chisel and get that installed and get using it. The new stop box setup works a treat, particularly for batching out the same size pieces. We do a lot of laser work here um, with weddings and baby products, so batching out our ply to fit on the laser is a dream now. So as you can see, this works a treat, made cutting that ply out really quick, efficient, got it perfect every time. So thank you for joining us. If you got anything out of this video, leave a like below, would be greatly appreciated. And as always, this channel is about growing together and building on our knowledge. So if you've got any tips, tricks, anything I missed or could have done differently, leave a comment below. Otherwise, I will catch you on the next one. Cheers, guys.